Fire Protector Dog is indicated on you today. Emma takes a few swabs from his bags and laptop and puts them through the iron scanner. The result is a cause for concern. It's a busy day at Auckland International Airport and customs dog handler Chad and his Labrador drug dog India check through a chocker flight from Los Angeles. Fine. Good girl. This man is subject to an indication by India. Can you explain to me why she's showing interest on you? Didn't tell you, no. Okay. Do you have any drugs on you today? No. Okay, when was the last time you had a drug on you? Um, probably last week. Okay. What was that drug? Okay. Okay. The fact he's admitted to using a Class A drug means India was right again. Good girl. Very good girl. So Mr. Coke is whisked away to the customs red zone. We'll take him in just to make sure he doesn't have anything in his bag. He's um he's pretty honest about about that, so uh, no doubt. Well, so we'll just we'll just cover that off, to make sure he's not a risk. He's an Aussie who's been living in Canada, but customs officer Emma wants to know a lot more than that. Okay, so the reason you're here is I understand a drug detector dog has indicated on you today. Why would that happen? Mm -hmm. What's a big night for you? Just out, no drinking, okay. okay. Emma takes a few swabs from his bags and laptop and puts them through the scientific spotlight of the iron scanner. The result is a cause for concern. He's got a positive hit on his laptop bag, so we'll be doing some further questioning. When have you started using drugs? Since I went to North America. Okay. He's also getting a little twitchy about making his connecting flight to the South Island, where he is meeting up with relatives. What time is it? The man's bags are put through the X-ray machine. There is concern that he may still have drugs in his bags, either unintentionally or purposefully planned. Uh, it looks good to me. Looks clean. Looks like there's no concealments that I can see. But he won't be allowed out of the airport yet. Because his possessions gave such high readings of cocaine and heroin traces, he will have to undergo a personal search. Addicts without contacts will stop at nothing to bring their fixes with them. Can you swab the inside of his pants as well? After a thorough search, the news is good and bad. Good news for customs in the country, no Class A will be coming in today. Bad news for the traveller, it's 9.45 and he's missed his flight. We ascertain that he didn't have, doesn't have anything prohibited on him or in his luggage, so at this stage, he's clear to go. It all goes to show cocaine use has more side effects than extreme self-confidence and a poor credit rating. Every international airport has drug dogs just like India, just dying to meet you. In a different hall, MPI biosecurity team Liz and Watchman are picking through passengers who have just gone through customs. They're off a flight from Bangkok, Thailand. Good boy, good sniffing, watch. So far, so ordinary. Everyone seems to have followed the strict rules, except this woman, who was singled out by the ever-vigilant Watchman. Is this yours? Uh, What's in? Yeah. Dry fruit. Yeah. Dry fruit. But dried fruit would not attract the sort of indication Watchman is making. So she has declared food, but she hasn't declared anything specific like animal products or plant products, which would include fruit or meat or their fish that they may have. So what I'll do is I'll quickly check this bag and then we'll send them down to the search bench and we'll get all these bags fully checked by the quarantine inspectors down there. In particular, this is one of the parcels that Watchman was quite keen on. Um, this is the one that smells like garlic. I'll just check. Oof, wow. So the picture, is, picture shows that it's fish, but um, we'll just try and see if there's any ingredients on there that um, tells us what actually is in there. I'm just going to open one of them up and cut one of them in half just to make sure that it is fish. It definitely smells like fish, but it's been made into a consistency of a sausage. I, but those are okay, no problem with those. One down, six to go. With so many bags on board, it's a wonder the plane took off. Squid. Yeah, this would be chilli powder. Oh, cookies. Lots of candy. Uh, we might have some more interesting stuff in here, you never know. Oh, this is all heavy stuff. Okay. 
Another bag bites the dust. Murphy's Law proves itself yet again as the very last bag reveals a serious biosecurity hazard. Chicken. Chicken. Alrighty, that is why. That's why Watchmen love that bag so much. Alright? These ones are not allowed. You can't bring meat into New Zealand. Chicken from Asian countries is about the last thing the New Zealand poultry industry wants to be brought into the country. These ones will be destroyed. All right, are we all tickety-boo here, Colin? Yeah, all good to go. The Thai woman had no need to BYO. Chickens outnumber kiwis by 16 to 1. Human kiwis, that is. Hi, Thank you. Liz congratulates Watchmen on being a superior sausage dog. Big packet of sausages in there. In that case, big packet of sausages. There you go. Come on, give me five. Yeah, well done. The criminals are out in force tonight in Hamilton. As the city sleeps, Scott and Uzi are on a mission to track down a couple who is trying to make a getaway on a nifty 50. Uh, the scooter's driven down a, uh, an alleyway, and uh, the units had to stop, and again, the scooter's continued on, and it's gone through a park. So we're going to go to one of the exits, and the other unit's going to go to the other exit and see if we can find them. Uh, can someone take the Cordon River and Herrifield? If you can wait at the bottom of the hill, just let us know when you're there. I'm saying take the dog and have a look. But before Uzi gets out of the van to do her stuff, Scott needs to make sure the other units are ready. We'll just wait for the unit to take up the cordon down there before we move any further in. But this just does a big horseshoe right around and comes back out here. And the alleyway with our last scene is just on the, um, the other side of this. It's like a B-grade Hollywood comedy. At some point, the scooter will have to give up or run the gauntlet. Scott's contingency is to make a call to the address of the scooter's registered owners. Meanwhile, Uzi is ready for action, should the scooter make a very slow run for it. Yeah, it's one on your left in here. However, tonight, Uzi's cat and mouse game comes to an end. The overwhelming police presence has convinced the Hamilton Hoon to come out and give up. He's been a very silly boy. Yeah, failing to stop for police and giving up the fingers. With his iron horse, or should that be plastic pony, parked at the door, the scooter man can't deny what he's done. Yeah. I, I, was, I was having a few drinks, yep, yeah, and uh, my girlfriend, she had a bit of a psycho, yeah. ran away. I went and found her. By the time I found her, one of your mates uh, saw me and I freaked out. OK, you had too much to drink, you reckon? As the police make their arrest, Uzi takes five in the back of the dog van, pondering the strange habits of mankind. Not for the first time. A little bit of problem solving applied, and um, we found the, the two offenders and the scooter. Leaving his tearful girlfriend to think about trading him in for a new model, the 18-year-old Scooter King goes off to be charged with excessive breath alcohol, failing to stop when followed by the red and blue flashing lights and dangerous driving. He was convicted on all three charges, fined a total of $900, disqualified from driving for eight months, and ordered to complete a driver improvement course.